Hey there, this is Jess Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, I'll talk to you about how a single element of my latest robot design turned into a full-blown product development life cycle that now is about to culminate in me ordering $400 worth of products to sell to all of you fellow bot builders and RC enthusiasts. I've designed a line of products specifically for other bot builders to make their lives easier and make soldering and wiring your robots faster, less time-consuming, less error-prone, and more reliable. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified right away when they go on sale. My latest video touched on this a bit, but very few of you watched it, so I'll explain everything from here. It all started when I was trying to figure out how the heck I could package an entire robot's worth of electronics into the very awkwardly shaped shrapnel mine, the three pound saw robot I've been working on. If you don't know about that already, I'll link to a playlist where you can learn about everything else I've done so far. I realized that I have the same problem with this robot as pretty much all other combat robot builders face fitting the electronics and wiring into a very tight space. I personally greatly prefer to use connectors on my electronics, so I can swap things as needed for easy foolproof repairs, but those connectors add significant bulk to an already spaghetti-like mess of wires, and it can often be quite a challenge to precisely measure and cut every wire to just the length needed when they all need to join together into a squid-like junction in a few places. So, I invented a device to make all of this much, much easier to do. Not only does it make things easier, but it'll keep your wiring much tidier, save space, save time, and will greatly reduce the chances that you accidentally wire something backward and blow up your expensive electronics the first time you plug in your battery. I've been selling the first prototype batches for the past couple weeks to those already within our community, and they're being received very well. I've just placed a much bigger production order so I can keep these products around for years to come, and to help benefit the community, and of course, to try and fund my own robots at the same time. It's only with the support of all of you viewers that I stay motivated to make things like this and take the time to tell you all about it. I really appreciate every single one of you who like and comment on my videos regularly. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new endeavor. Why? Back to the topic at hand now. Every combat robot or radio controlled thing of any kind has the following components. A battery. Receiver. Multiple electronic speed controllers or ESCs. Multiple motors. And a central disconnect switch or link. This is true of RC airplanes, drones, cars, boats, in addition to combat robots, as they share many of the same components. The RC hobby has existed long before combat robotics started to rise in popularity, so we share many of the same components, as I discussed at length in my recent video on how to pick components for a robot so you don't set it on fire. In addition, every single competition in combat robotics requires the use of a master power disconnect, and here in the United States, the most common style by far in 3-pound robots is the finger tech switch which is basically a plastic body with a screw that, when tightened, bridges the connections between copper contacts. The switch is closed and opened with the turn of a 332nd inch hex key as seen here. Because of the nature of the screw, huge impacts will never flip the switch, unlike your standard spring-loaded toggle switches, and it also packs monstrous current capability into a small package. Well, at the end of the day, it's a screw connecting two bits of copper. You know what else has bits of copper? Printed circuit boards. How? I could go into exhaustive detail and bore you all to death, or you could take a look at some of these sick b-roll shots while I talk about what I learned through this process. I have essentially developed two separate product lines, and I'll be adding a third one with this newest order. There is what I'm calling the basic PD board, and the all-in-one PD board. Let's start with the basic board, which I'll be running in shrapnel mine and have been testing the past few weeks. This is basic because it's literally shipped to me as what we call a bare board, just a PCB with no components attached. PCBs, or printed circuit boards, are made up of layers. In the middle is a fiberglass composite called FR4, which is extremely lightweight, but durable and stiff, and can survive extreme temperatures. On both the top and bottom are stacks of other layers. There's a copper layer that is just 0.0014 inches thick, or 35 micrometers. Using a process of silk screening patterns known as masks and applying special chemicals, the copper can be plated on or etched away into extremely precise and intricate patterns and shapes, so electricity goes exactly where you want and nowhere you don't. On top of that layer is what's called the solder mask, which gives this board its pretty black color. This is a non-conductive enamel coating that prevents short circuits from anything conductive touching the board. On top of the black solder mask, we also have a white silk screen layer, which shows where the components go, how they have to be oriented, and I added helpful text here and labels where appropriate so you, the user, know how to wire it all up. Everything I just mentioned exists on both sides of the FR4 board for a two-layer PCB like these, but more complex boards can have six or more copper layers glued together. 
Because the manufacturing for PCBs is highly automated, and it's done in China generally with low labor costs, the cost to make a ridiculous number of boards is only slightly higher than the cost to make one, because it's nearly the same amount of work to make all of the masks and silk screens for one or 1,000 boards, and massive volumes are manufactured at one time. This makes it possible for even a random nobody like me to buy dozens or even hundreds of these boards at a time, as long as I have the money to do so. When? Now at this point you might be thinking, here comes the Kickstarter plug, but you would be wrong. I'm not making any promises that I can't keep, and I'm not going to mess about with any of your money for months before I have products made. I literally have them on order right now as I tell you about it. I spent nearly $400 of my own money just on this one order, more than 100 of each board design. In total, I've invested over $700, in effect creating a whole small business around designing, producing, selling, and distributing these boards. In a few weeks, when I have them on hand, I'll make a more infomercial-like product announcement video, but this one's just to let you guys in on what I've been doing, and I hope to build a little bit of excitement for when the bulk order can go up for sale. With any luck, I'll bring a number of them with me to the upcoming July 24th Norwalk Havoc event, where I plan to compete with Shrapnel Mine. I'll also be sure to do some validation and testing to ensure they meet all functional and quality requirements before I sell any of them, just like I've been doing for the ones that you can buy right now on my web store. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you can buy the remaining prototype boards today, there's only a few left because everyone else seems to really be enjoying them. So what's next? Now you must be wondering, what happens now? Well, with these on order I can go back to focusing on making Shrapnel Mine an actual robot instead of just a pipe dream. I wanted to power through this whole process in time for Norwalk and still leave time to get this whole robot designed and built. Shrapnel Mine will be my focus for the least the next two weeks straight. If you want to see more of the process behind this cool little bot, check out the playlist linked below. And let me know what you thought about this video while you're down there. That's all I've got for you today. If you liked this video, hit like. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And as always, thanks for watching.